Hello, as a writer of Occultosophia, nicknamed Saturnin, I would like to present another book which is a form of a praxis accompaniment to Occultosophia. It's called Methods and Theories of Magic Select Praxis Accompaniment to Occultosophia. You can find it on Amazon and Rydero. I would like to read a select chapter on the theology of the solar religions in which I'm trying to prove the divinity and intellect of the sun. So let us read. Theology and Metaphysics of the Sun, the Kingdom of Phoenixes and the Divine Fire. Whatever words we use for the divine are tainted with an inner understanding. When we speak of things intelligible, we indulge in the Socratic irony in which subjects which ought not to be spoken of and written down must necessarily be so. Otherwise they are lost, unexplained, and those who have an inner eye to read them will recognize them at once. Those who have no wisdom will fall prey to their prejudices, and the great majority of mankind will not even attempt to approach either words or hearing or wisdom or the truth of the inner eye. I like to cite myself. It adds parts, spice to the conversation. George Bernard Shaw, and this was a citation from me. Now next. The physical objective universe is explored. There are physical laws. This is a conception of a category of the indiv indivisible whole that applies. Another such category is metaphysical, which are hidden auxiliary laws, laws of what we do not know about the world. Imagination can enter a very strange realms here, but the point is to determine the concepts that are correct, using the faculties that are considered metaphysical, abstract or intellectual. In this approach, I will try to derive the metaphysical properties of Helios, the visible sun, and exclude Ion, third transcendent, and Hyperion, second transcendent, from the physical and pneumatic properties, which are metaproclivity, so that the sun, as one star among countless other stars in all their possible types, can have its own karman in the world of changes and movement. This can be said of any inanimate object, but there is a difference between a piece of material substance from which nothing emerges except the change of its substance within its possibilities and the sun from which an entire habitable system emerges. Here, Karman is understood as an inclination to change and transformation with its pertaining characteristics based on the essence, substance and nature of a given thing. As a divine intelligence, the sun can be autophonic, self-identical, self-manifesting, and its intellect should relate to all the axioms on which it is based in order to be integral. We can think of it as a highly complex geometric sphere in motion, where its core, layers, coronal mass ejections, hypergranulation, thermonuclear events, radiation et al., are a shadow of its philosophical essence from the physical perspective, being absolutely inseparable in this respect. What is at play here is the magnitude of the effects that the philosophical essence produces in manifest reality. Otherwise, every solar flare would be considered an act of an angry god, in which an anthropocentric infantile fetish tries to seek meanings where there are none. Yet we should not shallow down the philosophical essences to near physical processes in the way of reification. They interpenetrate each other in pockets of entropy in topological spaces, conceptually speaking, but the philosophical intellectual essences hold the higher ground. As they are qualitatively rectified to suit the purpose, all magical, mystagogic, pneumagogic, intellectual, Apollonian, heliotic endeavors in which we may engage. The intelligibility between the philosophical sun and mortal is most entwined between the inner eye and pneuma. The original thinking and order out of chaos arises. It appeals to logic, prudence and purity and stands for reason, for fierce truth and honesty. It is as evident as the sun. Like the Arcadian kings who were lion-headed and serpent-tongued, it smites with divinity. The sum of its divine presence is derived from the attributes and properties of the whole, insofar as we can nomadize and hypostasize the observable processes while using meta-rhetoric to return from the physical to the divine in order to arrive at certain premises. Conversely, we derive the physical from the divine and in this inductive deductive feedback loop, we attempt to determine the characteristics of the sun god. 
Let us think of the dead, lifeless matter made of elements, which through a complex transformation over billions of years, becomes life and inhabits our planet. In contrast, the Sun is the first foundation stone of life on Earth. It already contains a potential blueprint from the totality of its potentiality and actuality arises. It too is made of elements available in the cosmos and there is a mystery here of atavistic generation and regeneration. The serpents like the universe's heliotic elements generate the intellect, the sun, and the intellect, the sun, generates its offspring, life. From a strictly, strictly linear view of causality and effect, this is an incomplete description, so this process can be codependent and co-emergent, representing a seamless flash of events that are uninterrupted. The philosophical sun must draw its intellect from the essences, be it anima mundi or transcendent realms, in order to envelop itself in the hella and order and repel the chaos of forms, the Tiamatic black sun aspect. And so it already contains the divine seed. So much for matter, here appear the divine philosophical essences that contain all the potentials that can become a reality under the right conditions. For example, life. If you take evolutionary biology, evo devo further, where a bow plan, a bullet plan, is necessary. I'm not presupposing an omniscient damage here, but built in rules of the game that are pneumatized, the self-generated divine is, but it plays its own game because the rules limit it and make it divine. A holy serpent would not hatch from the cosmic egg otherwise. Apart from the occult factor, the sun was often represented in Egypt as the Great Eye, and among the Chaldeans also as the Corridor of Fire, in the latter case as the gateway for souls and spirits from their transcendent realms to the phenomenological world. The development of the optical faculty in animals would be neither possible nor necessary without the sun. The sun is the observer of its own perspective because it made us to observe it and to develop organic abilities to see. Here no evaluation is necessary. The superior policy of the sun is the essence of our existence. To see the light of the sun with our eyes means to reflect the star biologically or physically. To reflect the divine intellect means to see it intellectually and pneumatically. Intelligence, or rather intellect, is often associated with the ability to think and feel for which a brain or mind is required. Let us leave this common sense aside for a moment and think of the solar intellect as a non-animal, non-human intellect, a great mind that contains platonic ideas, which in the philosophy of mathematics are called types and are therefore eternal. The representations are transient tokens or traces. How does it contain these ideas? They are a manifestation of the syntax and the grammar of the deep laws of the universe. Are they ordinary ideas, as if I would think the idea of freedom or how here be dragons? No, they are the crystallization and sublimation of simplicity into multiplicity, which have their own characteristics, geometrical, intellectual, full of inclination, nature, ethos, pneumatism, which show and manifest themselves in reality. Human imagination and conception processes all possible and impossible worlds. That is, ideas can draw from an infinite library, but an infinite library is only partially meaningful, objectively speaking. If we command a monkey to type infinitely, it will eventually write a great novel in one of the possible worlds. This book written by a monkey represents the idea of a notion, that is, the place where human imagination and intellect coincide where these objectively valid truths are approximations to these truths of the universe. For two in the sun, there is singularity and multiplicity, individuality and collectives, its servants and midwives, its angelic host hidden, its spiritual intelligences and magnanimous choir of divinity. Why did I mean, mention hidden? Because those forces are really religious. All theology and philosophy is man-made. They don't give a fuck about human religions. No, no. Okay. So, a choir of divinity, it manifests as a winged sun disk interlaced by twin uraic serpents, the king cobra serpents, in continuous motion through the galaxy. It has its home in yet higher divine fire, wherein it rests after the weight of matter and chaos destroys it. For example, as in supernova. 
Thank you.